So I'm going to try to speed run through this process that I wrote of generating these fractals as SVG drawings, scalable vector graphics, that is, and then importing that into Blender and then rendering it as a 3D object. So it's a nice 8K render result in Blender. All right, so the step-by-step -step process involves generating the curve, of course, and then after that, you have to obtain a nice high quality PNG image that has a transparent background. From there, you can very smoothly convert it into a scalable vector graphic and then import that into Blender. After that, we can convert that into a 2D mesh in Blender and then extrude that into a 3D object and then start applying whatever visual effects and then start rendering and then we'll be done. All right. So you can type in online tools fractal generator in the Google search bar and then go to online fractal tools. And you can download 10 fractals for free per day. Let's say, for example, we chose to do like, mm, well, a more fractal. It looks similar to a Hilbert curve. <laughs> and the resolution is not great by default, so you can crank this up to like 8,000 by 8,000. And then the background, we want to make it transparent. So you can click on this color palette icon and then drag this bottom slider bar all the way to the left. And now it will have a transparent background. But the fractal curve itself, we need to change that as well to some darker color. And then the fractal widths, we can make it something like 50 or something because it's such a, a large image. So 50 pixels. But I don't think that's enough either. So we'll just make it like 100 pixels. And then you can save it and then download it. So I have a couple of fractals downloaded using this same set of settings already. So you can download that. I'm just showing you how to do it. And then we can go to png to svg.com in order to convert our PNGs into SVGs. So if you click on this, then close this box that pops up, you can start uploading them here and then downloading, downloading the SVGs. Okay, so I'm gonna close this and now we're we got Blender open. I got Blender 4.2 and we can start setting things up. I'll get rid of this cube. I will click on the camera and then I will zero out the rotation to zero, zero, and zero. And mind you, this is under the object properties. Okay, now you'll see that the camera has been aligned to the plane. That's what we want. We need to go to the toggle camera view, hold down the control key, scroll inwards, Find a nice comfortable spot, press the letter N on the keyboard, go to this view tab, camera to view, press N again to, con to close that. Now we can move the camera to wherever we want to render. Okay, now we can toggle out of the camera view so we get some freedom of movement. And this whole plane here is, is all in gray. So we'll change this to black in a moment. But first, let's import the fractal curves. No, no, no. Let's, let's do that second. So let's go to Render Settings, Cycles, GPU Compute. And if that option does not show up, make sure you go to the Edit tab up here, Preferences, and then change the System under System tab. Make sure you select CUDA or Optics. And then allow online access if you want to use some kind of mesh editing tools. And then close this. So anyways, I'm going to go to Cycles, GPU Compute, and then change the noise threshold to zero. And I'm going to use 996 samples. And then I'm going to go to turn off the denoise. I'm going to change the film from 1.5 pixels to 0.2 pixels. 
it will have much sharper edges around the objects when it's rendered. And I go to Performance and click on Persistent Data. And then everything else, leave it, leave it by default. All right, so let's go to Output. I'm going to change this to 8K resolution because I'm interested in 8K resolution. So 40... 40, it's 40 something, 40, oh, four, I just remembered, 4320, yeah, there you go, so that's 8K resolution, render region, I will save this in my downloads folder, and I'll choose RGBA by default, because if you turn it into a transparency with no background, then it won't work without RGBA, at least in my case. All right, so now I can import, start importing the SVG. SVG, look for the folder. Here's my fractal. There we go. So now we got this SVG drawing that's been imported, imported into Blender. You need to click on this. And I also need to go to the wireframe viewport shading. You need to box select this. So first you do a click and then box select. And then go to object, convert to a mesh. And you'll see all these tiny little triangles in this whole geometry. And now I'm going to use this arrow tool. Press object, set origin to center of mass. Move it aside. Now let's go import the other SPG right here. All right, so now I'm going to go object, convert to a mesh. Same, same operation. And then just make sure that everything is joined together. There's no broken parts of the mesh. Let's just make sure this is a mesh because I don't want this thing missing out. Okay, that's good. Now it's all mesh. All right, so let's click on one of the meshes. Go to edit mode. And then select this whole fractal. Use a face select. Go to mesh. Clean up. Limited Dissolve. And that will clean up all those little triangles to its best ability. And if we get close to here, press the letter E to extrude. And then if it's if it's moving around, just press the letter Z. So it can lock in the Z direction. Now we can clean this up. Select everything. Go to Mesh. Clean up. Limited Dissolve. Now, let's go do the other one. Go back to object mode, select this. Go to edit mode. Use a face select. Select everything. Go to mesh. Clean up. Limited dissolve. All right. So now we can extrude this. And that's good. Check that out. All right, so let's go to sign some materials, go to material properties. Get rid of this. Same thing with this one. Get rid of that default color. And we'll change this to a new material. It's glass BSDF. And then you can pick whatever color you want. Go to new. Change this to glass BSDF. And then we'll just make it maybe red or something. Okay. 
So let's go to the rendered viewport shading. Therefore, it will look more photorealistic. Now it actually does look like frosted glass. <laughs> All right, so let's change the background color. Let's go to world color. Crank this down to black. And now for some special, some very special lighting. Here's a technique. In object mode, go to add mesh torus, and then increase the size of this torus. You can press the letter S. And if that's too much, go to torus, click on this little tab here, and then increase the radius of the torus. Look at that. You can do like eight meters. That seems seems to work pretty well. And we'll move this up a bit. Out of the way. And then select the ring one more time. Go to material properties. Add a material. And just go straight to emission. It's already white, so we can just increase the strength of the emission so that it starts to glow and the light will start interacting with the objects. And there you have it. And if it's too bright, you can just crank it down. Two, four. And we can say save. We'll save this as SVG to three D mesh. Frosty. All right. That looks pretty. That looks pretty nice. <laughs> Save that one more time and then we can start rendering. It'll be done rendering in a, in like maybe three or four minutes. So I'll come back. All right, we're almost done here. And voila. <laughs> that is beautiful. Look at this. Nice and sharp. Yep. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and save this and put it in the downloads folder and say red and white fractals. Save. <laughs> okay. Hope you enjoyed that. That was, a, that was the fastest tutorial I made on fractals. All the other tutorials were, well, at least the other tutorial I made is, I feel like it's a bit long. All right, thanks.